Howdy folks, Jeff Slingstack here. I want to show you how to make an introductory video for a DVD project such that the video will play for a while and buttons will appear and those buttons will be active. I mean, if you're just playing a video, how can you have active buttons? But there's sort of magic to this whole process where you can take a video and have buttons residing on top of that, but have those buttons be invisible but still work. So here's a video that I made that will serve as the introductory video for this project. Uh, this video came from a book I did a few years ago classroom a book on Encore DVD and it's just this little video of this guy here and then we start bringing on some text and bringing on uh, these video clips which look for all the world like video buttons in a DVD but in fact this is just a video so where I go from here is I take a still frame from this and to make a Photoshop file out of that still frame that I can use as a template to create uh, a DVD menu. And I, so first I just save this After Effects project, but you can make any video in any kind of a video editing program that you're working with. This just happens to be After Effects. And then I go over to Encore now, and I need to I use that still frame that I made uh, as a template to uh, work inside here to help me make a menu. So I import that still frame as a menu. And that's just a still frame. Nothing's going on there, just static. And now I need to add some buttons to this that will more or less match the size of these buttons. And then from that, I'm going to then save that as a Photoshop file as a menu and go from there, kind of like a little template. So I'll go to the library, and there's a, there's a video button called the Blue Notes button in the general folder that will more or less work for me here. So I'm going to take that and add, double click it to add that button. And it's a video button that doesn't have any embellishments to it besides just a little drop shadow. So I'm going to adjust it so that it more or less fits the size of this guy. And it's not critical that it fits the size because I can adjust this later in Photoshop, but I'm going to get it more or less right now anyways. There we go. And once I get that right, I'm going to duplicate this by going Control or Command D a couple of times. And get these guys lined up as well. There we go. They're overlapping a little bit because they're a little bit large. I'm going to shift click on the three of them here and make them a little bit smaller so they don't quite overlap. Yeah, so they don't, you get that red line when they overlap like that. So that's what, that shows that they're overlapping. There we go. So now I've got three buttons. They've got a little text in them where it says scene one, scene two, and scene three. The black text in the back is on, on, this, on this freeze frame. There's a little bit of text there, and if I turn on the sub-picture highlights, there's a little itty-bitty note there that you barely see. But what I, what I want to do is I want to make that text smaller and use a different font, and I want to turn that note into a little arrow, but this is the sort of like serving as the foundation for what will be a menu. So all I need to do now is go to this button up here with this menu active and click on uh, this button that's Edit Menu in Photoshop. And if I do that, that'll open this up in Photoshop. Let me flip over to Photoshop. And it looks something like this. Now, I've already edited this one and took out those little scene things and changed the text and changed the highlight from the, those little notes to a little arrow. If you look at here, I'll click on the highlight there and you can see that I've added a highlight there as a little arrow instead of those little notes. But this, now turn off the background, you can see now that this is how the menu is going to look. Let me turn off the highlight. There we go. And so what I've done is I've taken that those little buttons that I got from Encore and, brought, and saved that menu as a Photoshop file, turned off the background now, and I've got the sort of the elements that I need to lay this on top of that video that I made in After Effects, and then I'll have these buttons disappear but still act as buttons. So I'll save this without the background visible like that. I'll just save this as a Photoshop file, and then I can import that into Encore. So let me go back to Encore. I don't need this thing anymore. It's served its purpose. I'll just delete it. Now I want to import that menu I just made. Import as a menu. That file call, I called it main menu. And that's what it looks like. It's just those three video uh, thumbnail placeholders. And there's text here too, but because the background is black, you can't see the text. So now I need to then bring in the background, that video that I made in After Effects, and bring that in and have it serve as a menu background. So in this particular case, because I'm working in the Adobe Production Premium suite, I can just uh, dynamically link to that project. I don't need to uh, transcode it or export it out of After Effects. I can just let it reside as an After Effects project and dynamically link to it here inside Encore. So I go File, Adobe Dynamic Link to that After Effects composition, import the After Effects composition. I select that composition right there, and here's the, excuse me, I select that, select that project, excuse me, and inside the comp, inside the project there's this one comp, I click OK, and now that comes in here as just an asset, a video asset. I can preview it here in 
can see that I've got this video asset. Very good. Now I want to add it as a background to this menu. The way I add it as a background to this menu is I simply drag it over to the menu, not on top of the one of the buttons, but in some blank space here. Hold down the Alt key and Windows Option key on Mac and then let go. And that makes a, a video background to this menu with these little buttons on top. The trouble is these buttons are visible. They will cover up the video as this thing plays. They'll cover up those little video clips. So I need to make those buttons not visible. But before I do that, I'm going to create some links to them because as long as they're visible, it's easier to make links. If they're not visible, you can still make links, but it's a little trickier. So I'm going to go over here and make a couple of links. I'll just drag this uh, timeline to that first one and drag this timeline to the second one. Now, notice that when I did that, it put the, this uh, video on top there, but I really don't want that video there because I want my video to play in the background and not have those guys be visible at the beginning. I want that to be just blank there at the beginning. So I'll show you how that works. I'm going to make those buttons invisible by clicking on this menu to make it active and going to the Layers tab here down in the lower right-hand corner. And you notice the Layers tab shows all the elements of that menu. And there are three buttons, scene three, two, and one. And each of those buttons has this little thing called uh, video. It has a little percentage sign video, and that's a little symbol uh, that's used when you make these things in Photoshop to tell Encore that this is a video thumbnail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the visibility of the video thumbnail, like so. And there it goes. And now, there that one goes. Now there that one goes. So now those guys won't be visible. Even though I drag the link to them, they won't play. And there's some text there as well. This text I don't want showing up. This, this text matches uh, the menu text that's going to show up in this background video. So I'll turn off the text as well. I'm essentially making these buttons invisible. They're still there. If I were to, let's say, click on the button routing, there are all those buttons. But they're not visible. And they won't be visible when this, uh, when this uh, DVD intro plays. And so if this is like the first play, if this menu is the first play on your video, It'll be, look like this when people uh, go take a look at it. I'll preview from here. And this will play. And then those uh, videos will appear. And people say, oh, they're buttons. But in fact, those buttons have always been there. But they just didn't realize they were there because they didn't see these little videos playing. Now, the one thing that's going to happen is it's going to get to the end of this video. And then it's going to repeat. And when it gets to the end of the video, it'll start off again with those guys being blank again. Right now it's kind of slowing down because it's uh, linking to After Effects and it is kind of slowing down. But it would get to the end of the video, there you go, and it gets blank for a while. And then it uh, reappears. Well, if I look at this, I see that six seconds in is when those videos are back on screen. So what I need to do is I need to have this menu background loop, this uh, animated menu loop, over and over again. But I don't want it to start at the beginning the second time it loops. So I click on the menu to make it active, and I go down to the Motion tab here in the Properties panel, and it says Loop Forever, that's fine, but the loop point right now is zero, meaning it goes back to the beginning when it loops. I want to change that to six seconds, so that the next time and all subsequent times after that point, it goes to the six second point when it loops, as opposed to going to the beginning. And so if I run this thing now, it, it'll, you know, those, these images will not be visible at the beginning, then they'll gradually start showing up, and then it'll play to the end, which is a th 30 seconds, which is probably a little bit long for us to watch. But I'll, I'll jump ahead here and let's show you how that works. Actually, it's the 18 seconds. And then it jumps to the 6 second point without um, having any kind of a uh, break to have those clips go away. So I'm, loop I'm looping at the 6 second point when those guys are already visible. So that's the process to uh, create an introductory video that allows you to gradually make your menu appear and let people uh, then click on these uh, video clips as if they were buttons when in fact the buttons are hidden away on top of them. All that here in Encore.